I sell thousands of dollars in coral per year without having a frag tank or putting frag racks in my split tank. In this video, I'm gonna show you how I do it. I'm gonna start a coral highlight segment at the end of every video that I do, uh, where I'll highlight a coral in my tank with a unique history, um, it's particularly beautiful or something that's unusual. So at the end of this video, I'm going to highlight one of my favorite corals, which happens to be uh, a torch coral. Needing to frag your corals is always a good time. Yay, stuff is growing. But not everyone has the room or the cash for a frag tank, but really, what reefer wants to deal with another tank? You can load your tank with frag racks, but that really subtracts from how awesome your overgrown tank looks. Many reefers have a nice sump under their tank, and chances are you can make some room and turn that into a frag tank. It's free real estate. My first frag sump arose when I needed somewhere to put a bunch of money caps. So I had a 40 gallon breeder that was an SPS dominated tank. So when my refugium crapped out and all my chato died, I decided to throw all of the money caps down a sump um, and they actually did really well down there. It wasn't a lot of space, but I ended up using it the whole time I had that tank up and running. I upgraded to a Red Sea Reefer 450 and I used that whole middle chamber of the sump. Other than the skimmer, I didn't really have anything else in that middle chamber, so I had a lot of space. When I upgraded, I wanted the same type of setup where I had this giant chamber with just the skimmer and then everywhere else for frags. Uh, luckily, I was able to find this that is meant to have an algae scrubber in the middle. So it's just this giant sump with a huge chamber. I've talked about this in one of my other videos. I just have the overflow. I have media cups, which I have empty right now. I don't really run media. Controller probes here. There's the inlet to my trident. Water kind of moves across. Um, so I just have my skimmer. And then on this side, I have dosing, that's my alkalinity buffer. My two heaters are in here. Auto top off sensor and the turn pump. I have one Nero 3 here to provide flow. My skimmer uh, is off in the corner, which the output is coming from right there across the, uh, this side of the tank. Uh, so that will create a little bit of flow as well. Um, as far as lighting, I have this Noop Seesh, Noop Psyche, whatever, however you pronounce, you know, this brand. But I got this for free um, in a uh, reef to reef raffle. I've used it for the last four years and it does a really, really good job. Uh, so basically that's my flow and that's my lighting. Um, as far as racks, this is a Building Obsessions frag rack with the little uh, silicone um, holders. Uh, this was great when you have sticks and snails or urchins. Uh, it'll hold all your frags in place so you don't have to worry about them walking away. Um, I have this kind of elevated frag rack here. This was a 3D printed one I bought off someone on Etsy. It was like 25 bucks. Um, it's nice and cheap, but the way the spacing of the holes are, it's hard to get a nice pattern or like you kind of have to play Tetris to get uh, this thing filled up. And then this one is just a piece of egg crate with PVC pipe uh, zip tied to the bottom for feet. So I farm zoos down here uh, for two reasons. One, uh, I can chop these up and sell them. A lot easier than trying to pull them out of the tank. Uh, but also I keep them as backup. Um, as some of you might know, Zoanthids can do weird things and just like die for no reason in certain spots. Uh, so this is where I keep all my backups, where I can pull a frag and replace it if it just, you know, shits the bed in my display tank. With all that being said, selling frags to the locals, I'm selling enough to where it made sense for me to get a business license and a occupancy permit and kind of set this up as a business. In doing so, you know, I'm looking at making a profit after all the write-offs of tens of dollars per year. So I got myself a pretty lucrative business here. 
pretty much anyone that has a sump that's not overloaded with equipment can make a little dedicated area to put some frags. I would not suggest fragging your corals unless they are healthy to do so. The pros, it's hidden so it doesn't detract from the look of your room. If you already have the sump, it's cheap and pretty easy to do. It's the same parameters as your display tank, so you don't have to worry about testing an additional tank. Some cons, it's smaller than most frag tank systems. You have more cleaning. Uh, my skimmer gets pretty nasty with having the light on it, so I have to clean that out probably every three months. Limited space, so if I wanted to run other equipment in my sump, I really can't because I don't have any room. Lastly, you're gonna end up with a sore back. So working out of this requires me to bend down and kind of lean into the stand. If you have people over to look at frag, you're asking potential buyers to drop down to their knees and take a look at your sound. For this video, I'm gonna highlight this neon green torch that I've had for the last five years. Now I got this torch when I traded in a bunch of my SPS corals to a uh, coral farm in Columbus. Coral farm is uh, Reef Systems out of New Albany, Ohio. This was right before the Indo ban, so torch prices were not crazy. Um, I traded a bunch of stuff and the owner, he's like, hey, I'll give you two heads of this torch as well. And I was like, sweet. That's a pretty nice torch. So fast forward a few years, I was starting to break down my tank before moving to Washington DC. Didn't really keep up with the torch craze and realized that torches were the new hot item. I was surprised that I could sell this coral for, you know, like $100 per polyp. And at that point I had about 20 polyps. So this coral, it's beyond just like your standard green with purple or blue tip torch. Brightness doesn't always convey well on video, but in person it's about as bright and fluorescent as like a holy grail torch. It's just there's no orange in it. What's special about this one is it grows so fast that the polyps never get really big. So by the time it splits, it's already splitting again. So Lazy's Coral House out of Dayton sells a torch that kind of matches the description of this one that I have. He calls it the blue tip jade torch, which makes sense given that I've got this from a coral farm in Columbus, which is only about 60 miles from Dayton. And I believe Lazy got it from a guy that runs a place called Coral Beauties. I think it's in Toledo, Ohio. Uh, so it makes sense that uh, this coral could be from um, that source. Uh, this coral has grown so much for me um, and I fragged it so much. Uh, that I always joke that this single torch has probably paid for half of my system. So that's this video's coral highlight. Uh, please leave any comments or questions if you have about it. I am not shipping coral, so please don't ask me if you want a piece. <laughs>